This channel supports Extra Life in its efforts to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. For more information about how to donate and join in their efforts, go to the link displayed here. Extra Life. Play games. Heal kids. What up everybody, this is your boy Black Megas, and one of the things that really stood out to me this year on E3 was uh, Microsoft's announcement of the backwards compatibility for the Xbox One. I think that's something that had surprised all of us. None of us saw it coming, especially since when Microsoft originally announced the Xbox One, their whole stance and presentation of it just spoke volumes that they were trying to separate the two consoles and make people move over to the new platform at any cost um flash to a year and a half later and now we have a system in place where if you own certain games that are under the umbrella of the backwards compatibility program that microsoft have keep in mind people um this is something that's going to start out first in their um Test phase is going to be a part of those people who are, uh, I forget what they call it, but if you're a member of that, members of that um, beta program they have for the Xbox One and, you know, the operating system and stuff like that, then you'll have access to that and you'll be able to check it out. Now, if you have a disc that is one of the games that is on that list, a list of 100 as of now, you don't have to purchase the game at all you can just simply insert your disc your xbox one should recognize it and initiate a download um i had thought at first it was a streaming type of service but it seems like it's going to be a downloaded copy of the game to your system um so if you you know that's how you can get it for free They've never spoke of what it would cost if you don't have the game. Not to my knowledge. I still haven't seen any pricing for it. But we'll find that out because you have to think that Microsoft's not just going to let you download any of these um, Xbox 360 games for free onto the Xbox One. Um, it financially doesn't make sense. You know, It'll be just like how the PS3 became once they dropped the emulating hard hardware from the PS3 so they can make it a cheaper system. I think that's how it's going to go. Um, like 10, 15 bucks wouldn't be bad. Uh, no more than 24 title. I'm sure there's gonna be some titles they're gonna deem that's $20 worthy. Like, I can see them doing that for Mass Effect. I can see that doing them doing that for, I believe, Red Dead Redemption is one of those 100 games as well. So, I can see no higher than 20. Uh, $10, $15 would be the sweet spot. 10 would be the three sweet spot for most of those games. But um, I think it's a cool thing. I think it's a real good idea for Microsoft to do. Um, it definitely will give 360 owners, current 360 owners who haven't upgraded yet to the new generation, a you know reason to get the Xbox One. That being said, is this going to be the thing that's going to swing the momentum so to speak shift the balance for Microsoft now here's why and I've said this in plenty of other videos and on podcasts backwards compatibility is something that we all seem to get excited about when we hear that we can do it it's something that we complained about because it was something that was quote unquote taken away from us we feel but the reality is one the nature of video game consoles when they move to a new generation has never been traditionally to allow backwards compatibility. That didn't start it until start until really the 360 and um, PS3. I think it had some backwards compatibility with the PS2, but it wasn't something that was prevalent um, until 360 PS3, the early PS3 days. You know what I mean? truth of the matter is most people who want to quote unquote go back and play older games tend to have the systems or I hate to say it this way but other means of visiting those games you know what I mean uh, we were fine with that um, and I really do believe most of us are fine still fine with it because even though you had the backwards compatibility on these older generation consoles PS3 and Xbox 360 it wasn't something that 
I believe a lot of gamers use to a point where <laughs> it was 100% totally justified. If it were, Sony would have never took away the emulation hardware. They would have found some other way to make things cheaper for gamers. The bottom line is, and I think they did that for later versions of Xboxes too, the backwards compatibility. Somebody let me know in the comment section. But the bottom line is, as much as we think we really love the um, backwards compatible thing, we don't really use it enough to justify these companies doing it. Especially now that we're starting to see we're getting at a point where these consoles are about to start ramping it up. Publishers are starting to make that total shift to the Xbox One and PS4 to go along with the PC instead of adding 360 and PS3 to try to boost sales. They're comfortable with their numbers. These consoles, both of them, have sold phenomenally and they have big enough uh, fan bases where you can start moving away from your older hardware and a lot of us who had that older hardware we are we didn't necessarily buy it to go back and play the older games because if i really really um just couldn't live without playing uh the god of war trilogy i could have just kept my ps3 also you haven't you noticed that all the quote quote unquote huge or more significant games are starting to come out on uh, these consoles and I say quote unquote because we're getting a lot of things that don't fit that um, title like say what you will about this whole um, trend of doing these remasters definitive editions whatnot but a lot of companies are doing it in the right way such as Microsoft putting out the Halo collection and the Gears of War collection those are two franchises that their fan base love. Why? So it makes sense for them to put that out there. <clears throat> Why would you need this backwards compatibility thing? You've put your two biggest franchise already on there. Maybe some Fable. Um, and you're pretty much good to go. You don't really need backwards compatibility because those are the games that people are going to want the most. Um, there's a handful of games that are outside of first party that we see people want the most but a lot of those we have as we have seen have made that jump Grand Theft Auto 5 Tomb Raider things like that uh, so with the, the with these companies ability to now develop new material quicker along with the strategy of putting games for the most part that people really want and that's why I say again the quote unquote huge stuff because there's been some stuff that made you scratch your head. Sorry, love the game, but you know, I I just don't understand why um they put out that Hong Kong game. Uh it's not true crime, I forget what they call it, but that was a game that I was just like um scratching my head at as to why they put it out. The game that um GSP worked on. Damn, I can't think of the name, but or like Dishonored, um, there wasn't really a call for that. Uh, Payday 2, same thing, not really a call for that. But Uncharted, Uncharted Collection, yep, there was. Uh, Sony half assed it with the God of War 3. They should have did just the God of War Collection, to be quite honest. But I, that's a title I could see people clamoring for. GTA, yes. The Last of Us, yes. Halo, yes. Gears, yes. You know, stuff like that. This, the, there's the, the stuff that people are going to probably mostly want is already coming so I don't know how effective um, this backwards compatibility thing I think it's going to be something that's going to be hyped when it first comes out I think it's going to do much better than of course PlayStation Now because of the fact that PlayStation Now costs a shit ton for little to nothing where this service seems to not cost at the moment, we see we don't have any pricing monthly plan, plan or anything. And Microsoft made the jab at Sony that they're not going to charge you anything for it. They're not going to charge you for the service, but they are going to charge you for the game. So we'll see how much the games cost. That's for sure. But good stuff, just not as impactful as I think people are trying to make it out to be, in my opinion. I think it's going to have, it's going to draw, you know, a small amount of people. But for the most part those of us who own own these new consoles 
we want new experiences we we really we our nostalgia is still there but i think for the most part we all want new experiences not to just keep turning back the clock you know what i mean but anyway you guys hit me up let me know what you think and i'll holler at you, holler at you later this is your boy black Mays and i'm out jesus